We are expected to get an updated uh, num updates on numbers on COVID cases throughout the province today after the Easter long weekend. Epidemiologist Raywat Dionandan joins us live now with the latest on COVID-19 throughout Ontario. Good morning to you. I wanted to first ask you, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we saw the removal of masks and a number of restrictions uh, here in uh, Ontario. I'm, I'm interested to get your take on what's happened the last few weeks and what stands out to you. Well, it looks like if we're not peaking now, we're peaking pretty soon in terms of number of new cases per day. So this wave will probably be over in a few weeks. But we're still seeing 100,000 cases per day, which is not great. Um, but... Uh, it's manageable in the sense that we have such good vaccination penetration that it probably isn't an existential threat to our healthcare system. Some people are going to get sick and some people are going to die, and I'm particularly concerned for those under five who can't get vaccinated yet, but we're not looking at the serious impact on our system as we saw in previous waves. And we keep hearing uh, from all from, from governments, uh, from officials, for people to assess their own risk levels. What's your advice on how someone uh, can do that? We just had Easter long weekend. Uh, some people decided to gather together, others didn't. So how can people decide for themselves uh, how to protect themselves and where to go and where not to go? It's a good question. What we're lacking here is situational awareness because we don't have the data to actually guide us as well as we have in previous waves. So we have to remember that the virus is all around us. COVID has not gone away, even though many of the restrictions have been lifted. We have to remember that almost everyone seems to have it these days. So it's like Russian roulette a little bit. If mm -hmm. you're going to be outdoors or indoors, rather, with people you don't know, wear a high quality mask and make sure you cover your nose as well. And if you're not vaccinated, get vaccinated. And probably the best thing you can do on top of those two things is check yourself for symptoms. If you've got symptoms, don't expose yourself to other people. Okay, and uh, I know a lot of people are going to be interested in this question here. Talking rapid tests, how effective are they? And uh, do you have a, a advice for people on when it's the best time to test themselves? So the rapid tests are still great, but their sensitivity has been diminished in the face of Omicron. This means that the likelihood of getting a false negative just went up. So to lower that probability, number one is if you're going to go to an event of some kind, get tested as close to that event as you can in terms of time. Do it right before you leave. Number two is make sure you've got no symptoms and you haven't had symptoms in uh, a day or two or so or more. Number three, swab your cheek, your throat and your nose and make sure that's negative. So if all three of those things are in place, the probability that your negative is a true negative just went up substantially. Wow, okay, that's some good advice there for people. Um, how can people tell the difference between a common cold, it's allergy season, and, and COVID? Is it even possible to be able to differentiate from home? Yeah, it's, it's really hard, right? So the symptoms of Omicron are things like a sore throat, a sneeze, uh, a cough that's relatively new, fatigue, all of which sounds just like the common cold. So it's almost impossible to tell the difference. And frankly, given how prevalent Omicron is right now, if you have those symptoms, it probably is Omicron. So assume you have Omicron until you have a test suggesting otherwise. Better safe than sorry. Uh, I do have to take uh, get your uh, take on this. Uh, do you think uh, that uh, we need to start reinstating restrictions? I don't. I don't. I think we have enough tools in our tool chest that we can manage this in different ways. As so long as people make good choices, we all get vaccinated and strategically wear masks. I don't think the time for economic restrictions is ever going to be present again. Uh, and I have to ask you, masks, does that include masks too? I think we should keep masks on the table as long as we possibly can. And that's the one thing that will trigger a return if certain things go south, as it were. So masks should always remain an option for us. Okay, Rewa, Dionand, and some good information coming there for you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.